Yeah. You met Michael Jackson? Yeah. Oh, man, what was that like? Man? Hey. <laughs> Charlotte on the scene, what's going on? Yo. Yeah, we have a special guest today. My man, my brother, uh, Ty Fife. And um, let me just give y'all a run around. Super producer, right? So he did a couple... He did a couple of couple of joints for some people. Let me run up, run up down for you, Rod. You ready? Go ahead. All right. So um, he produced for uh for for Teddy Riley, Rex mm. in Effect, mm. right? MC Light, LL, mm. Mm. Eric Sermon, Redman, Keith Murray, Buster Rhymes, Craig Mack, Mace, Big L, Nas, Met the Man, Foxy Brown, Jay Z, Slick Rick. I mean, keep going. All right. So uh, Ja Rule, Big Pun, mm. Benny Siegel, Memphis mm. Bleak, Q-Tip, mm. Cameron, mm. Exhibit, MOP, mm. Royster 59, 50 Cent, EPMD. Mm. Like, I mean, so we just, you know, start to... Keep end- going. All right, 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 right. Give, all right. So Ghostface, uh, Styles man. P, Prodigy, Shaquille O'Neal, Chic Loose. Listen, I'm not... Do- I'm, listen, we're we going to do this. We ain't never going to interview him. Yeah, all right, all right, man. All right. Shout out to my man, Ty Fife, man. <laughs> the one and only. Thank you for stepping in the on, building, brother. man. Yeah, we yeah. had some technical difficulties, man. We got through it. <laughs> oh, man, he like, yo, L, I love you, brother, but I got things to do. I got checks to cut. Man. I, got, <laughs> back right I got beats to make, man. You over holding me up. <laughs> Woo! We here, though, baby. No doubt, no doubt. Thank you, Definitely. Fife, for holding on, man. Dear life. <laughs> <laughs> Dangling. Thank you, thank you. So let's get right to it, Fife. Um, uh, so how old were you when you got into the business? Uh, maybe like 20. 20? Really? 20? Okay. And um, who, what was your first record that you produced? Uh, I would say on production, Rum Shaker was my first record. Woo! That's crazy. Yeah! That's crazy. <laughs> so, That's crazy. wow. So you and Teddy Riley, so you knew Teddy Riley before you um you did with nah, Rum Shaker? I, I, uh, a friend of mine, Franklin Grant, he was engineering for Ted. You know, I came to Virginia. Uh, to live, I was out there, and then I, you know, I got a chance to meet him. And one of the day I met him, I played him some songs, and he, he said, "Yo, I, w- I want to sign you as a producer." And then he, okay, he, so what was you doing in Virginia? Like hustling. <laughs> <laughs> yo, for wrong reason, hey, yo, wrong fight, reason. Yo, fight, come on, man. Yo, for, for, yeah, it's, it was like that down there. <laughs> Facts. It was some money down there too. Wasn't it? <laughs> we can't rewind the tape. We Virginia, can't. Virginia was it. Yeah, yeah. I believe <laughs> it. I know some people that went down there. Got some... was down there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Was your hustling days good or was it like ah? I ain't gonna lie. Like, the, I mean, my you know my peoples, they was doing, they was doing it. Got gotcha. you. You know, yeah. was, they actually, you know, I, I was out there. I was with them, but you know, I was really selling mixtapes at the time. So okay, gotcha. They didn't really want me to be hustling, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And but how did you? How did I was going to st- do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you start doing beats? Because I grew up in a musically, a mu- like like a family that that music, bunch of musicians, mm-hmm. but ain't nobody buy me no um, MPC or no um, SP twelve hundred or none of that. Like no, nobody did that. I, I didn't have one of my own. Uh, I used to go to the studio in Brooklyn, and Franklin was showing me how to, you know, uh, use the twelve hundred. Okay, and Franklin is uh, who? Uh, that was Teddy's engineer, Franklin oh. Grant. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So okay. I, I got to meet Ted through him, mm-hmm. and that's how I got on. You know what I'm saying? And then when I got with Ted, then I started like really mastering the twelve hundred, but really learning how to produce. Period. Because mm-hmm. you know, like he, he. Uh, he showed me how to arrange records too. That's really important and how to make Definitely. your sounds smack, you know what I'm saying? Mm. That's right. That's right. So so when you so basically you hooked up with him, he had his sound, you had your sound, it was similar or together y'all I made mean, it. He was more like a he's more like he always made his 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 drums is is hard too, but mm-hmm. right. He's more he's an R and B like you know he's musically inclined, so right, I absolutely. was more like the streets, and he was more like the R and B of it. Right. You know oh, I know you're the streets, brother. I got some. I got some <laughs> records that ain't been released that I, you know, woo, it's crazy. I mean, right. What's what's up? You got something for him? Yeah. So what was it like when when Rump Shaker hit the streets? Like you 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 know what I mean you just you just produced it. You know you, I mean, you 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 worked with it. You 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 were on it, and then that that and then also the video. 
Got to talk about the video after after you after ah, dropped through the streets. Yeah, let's talk about the, <laughs> talk about the video. It, it, it was a life changing experience. Like I said, like down there when I got to Virginia, I wasn't a producer. Mm -hmm. I I I actually learned how to produce from Teddy because, okay. like, we had like forty eight hours to turn that record around. Mm -hmm. It was it was called Shake Your Rump. Mm -hmm. it, you know, um, and he was he he was excellent at remixes. Mm -hmm. but he could, I seen him take records apart and put it back together again and sound greater. So we worked on that record for like 48 hours. I added my parts, I gave it to him and he just flipped it, arranged it, flipped it, you know, made two different versions. Mm -hmm. And and like I said, it was like that was like a like his studio was dead smack in the in the middle of Virginia Beach. Like down the block, uh Princess Anne High was where Pharrell mm -hmm. They, they went to school and you know they got discovered from Ted because Ted went to his town search and found them. Gotcha. But everybody came there, like Missy Timberland came to the studio. Wow. Mm -hmm. you know, all that I, uh, damn, all, all that Kelly, oh man. Kelly, the public announcement, Rodney Jerkins, wow. Rock Carter, everybody came out. All that Ted. talent. What about Aaliyah? She was rolling around there too? I never saw her, but Ted was working with her. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Okay. Ted yeah, worked with her before she passed. Yeah, that's so. crazy. My, my um my family, uh, both our family, my family in Queens actually moved down to the Tidewater area for a while. They went to oh, Norfolk yeah, State Tidewater, and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, they, they were in St. Albans. A lot of, yeah. lot of Queens people was moving back down there. That's crazy. Um, the video, though. <laughs> oh, the video was crazy. Because, um, uh, you know, Ted did a lot of scenes. He had a, he had a house in, on, in the Virginia Beach, on okay. the beach. Um, and in his backyard, he did, like, one of the scenes with the boat. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy! It was dope. Wow. A, lot of, wow. a lot of chicks was out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, remember, I remember when I was a kid. My uncle was watching. It was the girl that was doing the the, the with the, the he was. Oh, he, yeah, yeah, that, he was, was not, that was at his house. That was back at his house. <laughs> wow! Get out of there! Crazy! crazy. <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh man! So um, so you did the you, so you did that the rump shaker and everything like that. So now you're taking off, and um, when did you? Go back up to New York and say, you know what, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do my own thing, or uh, you know, what I mean, two I years later, two years later, it was like, I don't know, me and Ted always stayed tight. That right. was like, mm -hmm. that's like my big brother, you know, what I'm saying, you. like, like he started me out. It, it, it was, it was different because he had just did the Dangerous album for Michael Jackson. He mm. actually, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. <laughs> say it, say it again, say it again. He just did what? <laughs> Did the dangerous album. My man. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, but what was ill was after Rum Shaker blew up, you know, we started getting tight anyway. I was like his number one producer. He had a bunch of producers down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he took me everywhere. He took me to Mike's house. Wow. He was working on this um this soundtrack for, for um Adam's Family Values. And he took me down there and we watched it in his movie theater. You met Michael Jackson? Yeah. Oh man, what was that like? But hey, <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't really talk to him, you know. Right, what I'm right, saying? Got you, got really you. Like this, right. You know, but I was like, "That's Mike." That's right. Mike. You, you, you Mike. was on business. You was on business. <laughs> Just doing yeah. it, doing business. Get it, you know. Get, you know, get your feet in the door. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. So, so when did you um like all all these artists and everything like that that um that I lined up? You know, what I mean that you've worked with. Mm -hmm. Uh, you did a lot of work. Uh, Jesus Christ, man. Um. I'm still working. I'm trying. I mean, I know. I, listen, I know that was the, the, this is the list probably from like maybe 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, I'm still Kind of sort, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, listen, I know that list is, is, is probably doubled now. But um, back in those days, like, so so basically you, um, you broke off from Teddy, but that's your man. And so what kept you going? Like, how did people discover you? Or just your name was just ringing in the streets? In the streets? But you know, I used to I used to hang with LL a lot. That's my boy. Okay. Um, uh, I did a lot of work with him. I plugged people in with him. Mm. Like they, you know, they like my personality. You know right. what I mean? I plugged other producers. I was never a hater. I just wanted to really, you know, build relationships. Really. Got gotcha. you, gotcha. brother. Brother Five. We just had a big fiasco about yes. LL Cool J on here in our last yes, episode. We did. But we're not. We'll yes. talk about that later on because. Yeah, I feel he wasn't giving LL his his true. Flowers. I mean, I gave him his flowers. We ain't gonna go there, but I brought, <laughs> basically, you know what this comes down to. You no, know this comes down to. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be real, right? So I don't want to, you know, because it's about you, right? But I know LL's your man. I was like yeah. in verses, right? Because I'm I'm a hip hop fanatic. 
really the only person kind of can go with LL. To me, it's Ice Cube because he can go the distance, possibly with the, the longevity. Say, I'm not going to take nothing from Cube. Cube is dope. Mm -hmm. But Todd is the, the, the GOAT, man. Yeah. Like, and, and for his time, I'm going to say for, it, it goes with times. People don't really get it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that he, he he's still relevant today. But what I'm saying in time time brackets, you know, there was the Run DMC era, and he was in that. I feel like in his, as a solo artist, for what he was doing, Against all the other rappers, he was best, basically the most advanced and hit making mm -hmm. and lyrically there. You know what I'm saying? So he had the, everything all wrapped up in one. Then you then you take it a little further because you know I, I survived these 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 generations. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. like you got like the the Nas, Biggie, and um, Jay Z era. Right. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Biggie was the best in that era. If he didn't right. die, like Jay Z took it. Jay Z yes. definitely the best, right. but. Nobody's messing with Big when a big, big, big had big, it. If Big was alive, it would have probably been different. Yeah. And then you got like you know the Fifty Cent, mm -hmm. Kanye, Drake era. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like at that, it's times to mm -hmm. me. It's like time gap. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm not gonna stay on that too long. I just we were just talking, and we yeah. always have these fun debates. We could, for, we could be on him for yeah. hours. Like, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? It's yeah. not like I'm not liking L, mm -hmm. but I'm basically like, who can is close can do it. I can't say many Not people because he had a Ice Cube, one thing I said, Ice Cube, Ice Cube came like 80, nah. 87. He was with NWA, though. I, yeah, I, know, I know that. That's what I was saying. I know, of course, I know that. Um, but there's a lot of people in my comments. That, Cousin L's a dumbass. He don't know them. I'm hey, like, hey, listen. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> they getting on me, bro. They getting on me. I, I ain't gonna just, lie. Ty, I was just saying, like, for the, like, you got to look at LL came out in, like, 82. He was on Crush Group. That's what I said in the comments. And he expanded his time from the 80s, 90s, well into the 2000s. So yes, that's covering three decades of music. That's the only still, person still close being to relevant. that was um was uh, Ice Cube. I think Ice Possibly Cube. Possibly Buster Rhymes. Buster Rhymes. I think was Buster. Like, I think Buster more than Ice Cube. That's crazy too. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Yeah. Whole Ice Cube. Cube. Right. Yeah. But that was like that, the only that, people that, that came different. up. Yeah. Yeah. Buster. Buster's crazy. But let's let's get back to you. So yeah, so 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 what so what was it like when you when you were producing like say in the nineties or late eighties or whatever? Uh and you were in the, you were in the, you were in the, you you were the top of your game, and you and you was coming down. Say you know you was in New York, you was in Queens, you was you was in Jamaica Ave, or you was at the Coliseum, and you hearing your joints on the radio. How, what, what what was the energy like for you? What what was it like, especially in Queens? Because I'm you know I'm a Queens cat. In, in Queens, it was fun. <laughs> you know, like to go out to go out because I was, I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't. I, I I was focused, but I wasn't focused. I was chasing too many. Chases, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> if I off the camera, you know how we. I was going three dates in a, a day, man. <laughs> hey, that's Fife. Let them know. No. Don't let them come to Charlotte now. Y'all ladies ain't ready for Fife, but let's keep this <laughs> busy. I was doing the wrong thing. I should have just been making beats, being militant with it. But right. you know, I had my fun. I, yeah, I still make joints. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad. No doubt. Um, but Queens, really, it was good. as good energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When I went to Manhattan, you know, the parties, when the, when the records would come out, I'd get love. Mm -hmm. even, even with Queens, I, I mean, I got, I know everybody there, but I was, you know, you get a little hate too. Right, you get that. Right. I just was mad. I come through with a new vehicle. Mm -hmm. Oof. It's crazy. What was the, what was the, back then, what'd you have? What'd you have? What, 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 what'd you push I had right a couple now? Of, a couple of wides right now. You know, like, at that, at that time, I think I had like a, Alexis Coop. Mm. Mm. That's a that's a, that's a, it's mm. a Alexis Coop from back in the days. A bubble eye. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. White mm. Lexus Coop. Mm. I had I had a drop BM. Uh, you know the, the, the um the, the one that you had. They had in warning. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Mm. Hold on, the eight fifty. The one that Puff had. The, um, the eight. That's the eight. That's the, the, the that's what the eight fifty. Well, right? it was three and a quarter. It was a, but it, was, it looked nice. I had okay. some tariff on it. Eighteens. Okay. You know, it had the, the wood package on the side. Right. Mm. Light gray interior. It was nice, mm. but back then, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. You would see it. I could be a master. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was trying to just have a... <laughs> <laughs> but as you should, <laughs> though. Time, best time. Yeah. I mean, as you should. People say, oh, why you spend that money? Why this? Why you do that? Listen, man. Mm. It was a hell of a you time. Don't want, so. You're damn yeah. right. No doubt. You I know, regret doubt. a lot of things, but I don't regret it. You mm. know what I'm saying? That's right. No doubt. Well, you're, one of your one of your most memorable tracks to me 
well, I mean, it's one of them, and I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but you you done you done uh, tracks for a lot of a lot of uh, prominent um, 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 rappers or artists in the game. Um, what was your biggest track? I think one to me one of your heart, the hardest beats I've ever heard was that Murder Gram. Thanks. That was one of the hardest beats I've ever like heard. That was, man. that was um, that was that was different for me. You yeah. know, I wanted to step outside of my, you know, because I'm from the streets. Yeah. I I, I I I and I study music. Right. So back then, you know, like even before I started really producing heavy, or as I was getting into it, I used to listen to a lot of like EPMD, mm-hmm. um, Eric B and Rakim, like mm-hmm. you know, like. Of course, LL Cool J, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Slick Rick. Mm-hmm. I was listening to a lot of the the way the drums was. Mm-hmm. I, I like drums. I'm I'm heavy into drums. Okay. So I used to, what I used to do was the way like breaks used to sound, they used mm-hmm. to have like, it was mastered and it have like um, gates on it. Mm-hmm. Right. I used to like to take loops that had gated drums. So when I made that beat, you know, I only had the 1200 at the time. Mm-hmm. So it didn't have that much time on the sampler. Mm. So I caught something and when I caught it, I chopped it. I kept letting it repeat, right. but the, the drums made it stick out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what's up, that's what's up. So, so, you, so you started with the SP12s. Did you ever SP-1200. use- 1200. 1200, 1200, right, 1200. And I believe Pete Rock used to, used to uh, yeah, P Rock. Rock is big on it. Was big on that. Yeah, did you did you go on like did you did you ever did you ever you ever uh, work with the with the ASR or the MP MPC or not? Just stay nah, to SP. I was never like that. You know, mm-hmm. like um, a friend of mine that passed away, uh, shot skills. He did like Onyx. Mm-hmm. Did like throw your guns in the air. Okay, yeah, okay, classic, okay. classic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we was really tight at one time. Right. So I used to really be inspired by the way he he. Uh, he used the 1200, but he used the 950. And mm-hmm. him and Large Professor was really tight. So they mm-hmm. used to use 950s. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know how to use a 950. And I stuck into what I was into. And I used to like EMU system that made SB1200. So I got a sampler mm-hmm. that was from EMU. Mm-hmm. And he used it like it was a 950. So I would oh, like, got you. samples in there for the, yeah. you know, the, the length. Yeah. The length. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, so let's speed it up a little bit, right? So we're going into well. Let me ask you a question because um, I know you work with a lot of artists. Mm-hmm. Who was the the? Fu- I'm not going to you know. We're going we'll to try to keep the the tone down a little. Some we ain't going to do too much crazy. But who was the one of the best artists you like working with besides LL? I know that's your man, but you know what I mean. Who's um, the best artist? him? But Jay Z, really? He don't write. Mm-hmm. So you playing you playing your track and, and you think that he he, he might not be listening and, and he's already got it ready to go in the yeah, booth. I, I was in the studio when he did Murder Gram. Uh, mm. Luckily, I was there. Wow. Just for his verse. Because wow. there was two there was two verses he dropped to that, right? Nah. I thought so. That- so maybe maybe they took another verse and put it on top because there was a what is this a guy yo with the caddy cold let the guy go let, let bleeding no, on your same, same one. No, that, like- that's a different one. I did both of those. I did okay. Murder Gram uh-huh. and It's Murder. It's murder. Mm. Okay, 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 okay. That's right, that's right. Okay. Ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. So what happened? Damn. Fine. I had to uh, lay the beat for Irv. I went okay. in, the, in the city to lay the beat, mm-hmm. and Jay was there. I got a chance to see him in the studio, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he just did some shit like this. It was just like, all right, <laughs> one take. That was it. That was, that was it. Done deal. Rap, wow. Steezy. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Now, did you ever get a chance to work with Biggie? Get it in, around that that whole energy? Nah, well, me and Puff was really cool. Right. I, I actually went to the studio to meet him. I met Biggie plenty of times. I was supposed to have been on Ready to Die. Ah! So he, he beats for Puff. I sent him, sent him beats. Mm-hmm. It's, never, it's never happened, but I was in the loop eventually. Puff caught. wanted to sign me as a hitman at one point. Wow. Okay. Wow. wow. That okay. never happened, but it was ill because, like, even around the time he was doing one of his albums, he flew me to the Bahamas. They picked like three of my beats: one for Little Kim's album mm-hmm. and two for Puff's album. Mm-hmm. Right. And he, you know, we was always cool. Like, I knew Puff before he blew up, and he was always like, we'd be in the tunnel. I buy him a bottle of Don Perignon. Mm. Like, 
that's we was cool. You right. know what I'm saying? You know, that's what's up. And that's crazy, man. Like Jesus Christ, fight, man. <laughs> Yo, like I'm being honest. We can go. All, you, listen, your hit, your list is crazy, um, ridiculous. So I see that you did a record with Slick Rick. What was special about that record right there you did with Slick Rick? I'm a big fan of Slick Rick. I don't know if people understand. I don't care if he ever made another album again. Mm -hmm. The Great Adventures of Slick Rick is one of the best all time albums ever made. Mm -hmm. If you listen to the lyrics, to the production, mm -hmm. to the the That's sound amazing. of it, mm -hmm. to the to the drum patterns, mm -hmm. to the to the way he had his accent, mm -hmm. the way it, the way he did it, it was like. Magnificent, and, Ted, like, and Teddy's the one that did the, the the single with him and Dougie Fresh. Oh, the show, the he show, yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. yeah That's what I'm saying. Like Teddy is a part of hip hop's generation, not mm. just one generation. Music, period. He changed. People don't even understand. He had his own genre. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like no other producer ever had their own genre. Yeah. Wow. In the history of music, period. Right. I, I mean, there's graders like. Quincy is definitely mm -hmm. goat, but he never had a genre. Mm. <laughs> right, 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 right. Name one producer that had their own genre. Mm. That's right. That's right. What What's one some of the classical? Um, I know, like, what What's some of the old school uh, records that? Because I know a lot of producers like to dig into the crates and, and get. I dig and, every day. Every day. So what what's what what's some of your what's some of the famous if you don't mind me, I don't, don't want to get into your recipe, your, your ingredients. <laughs> like, I mean, it don't even matter, you yeah. know, because I'll tell people, but I, I won't make like beats online and so people can see every day, like mm -hmm. with videos. Like I feel like I'm past that. If somebody don't do their homework and figure out what I do, then, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't mind you know, talking about it, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, everybody got a process. Everybody is creative in how they do their own shit. Right. Me, I've learned to reinvent how I make music every time. Mm. Studying. So, mm. like, let's just say, like, um, you know, back then, break beats was big, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, I like to program, like, the hardest break beats. Mm -hmm. I'll program drums real similar to that exact break beat that moved people because mm -hmm. drum pattern is very important. If people listen to it at the at, in the edge of time, mm -hmm. it's always been the drum pattern that makes the hit. Gotcha. 